Yo, this video is gonna be interesting. Finally, we're going to get answers to all of our questions and what the fuck really happened in this game? Whose fault was there in a cascade? What project was Mossman talking about in Half-Life 2 Episode 1? Why does Eli know about G-Man and what his intentions are? All of this in today's video. Don't forget to watch previous videos, hit the subscribe and like button to support the content I do if you obviously like it. Now go grab some things to eat, sit comfortably and let's watch what happened in Half-Life 2 Episode 2. Half-Life 2 Episode 2 is the first Half-Life game where we encounter no G-Man at the beginning. After the crash of the train, because of the shockwave, we woke up in the destroyed train. It turns out that Alex survived the crash too, and she helps us to escape the train. We observe that above the collapsed citadel, a super portal is being formed by the Combine in order to call for reinforcements. A portal storm, which is an event that creates a multitude of portals to other dimensions, occurs opening a path for us. Alex tells us that we have to contact White Forest Base and deliver our data packet that we stole from the previous episode. This data holds the information about the location of the Combine Overwood, Super Portal creation and its maintenance. White Forest Base is where the Resistance Group resides now because the previous base was obviously destroyed. Fighting through a lot of enemies, we finally reach a communication building where we contact the Resistance Group. Eli and Kleiner are both relieved because we survived the crash. Arne Magnusson is a new character who is now the head of White Forest Base. He tells us that we have to bring the data as soon as possible because the Combine is still searching for us, trying to take the data we possess. During our adventure to White Forest, Alex gets critically wounded by a hunter and we are trapped being not able to help her. Luckily a nearby Vortigaunt kills the hunter and helps Alex and Gordon to escape, but unfortunately Alex's wound is more serious than we thought. Together with Vortigaunt we arrive at a small underground resistance base. The Vortigaunt waits for other Vortigaunts in order to save Alex because only his power is not enough. Together with arrived Vortigaunts, we have to fight some waves of ant lions in order to be able to start the healing. After the fight, Vortigaunts say that they require the ant lion larval extract to save Alex. So, together with a companion Vortigaunt, we head deeper into the mine in order to find it. During our little adventure, we encounter an ant lion guard that protects the extract. We can't kill him because of the possibility of spoiling the extract, so we can only run from him. Eventually we reach the Nectarium, where Vortigaunt obtains the extract and we go back. The healing process begins and during this time, time suddenly stops and G-Man appears. Dr. Freeman... I realize this moment may not be the most convenient for a heart-to-heart, -heart. but I had to wait until your friends were otherwise occupied. There was a time they cared nothing for Miss Vance, when their only experience of humanity was a crowbar coming at them down a steel corridor. When I plucked her from Black Mesa, I acted in the face of objections that she was a mere child and of no practical use to anyone. I have learned to ignore such naysayers when quelling them was out of the question. Still, I am not one to squander my investments, and I remain confident she was worth far more than the initial appraisal. That's why I must now extract from you some small repayment owed for your own survival. See her safely to White Forest, Dr. Freeman. I wish I could do more than keep an eye on you, but I have agreed to abide by certain restrictions. Well, now listen carefully, my dear. When you see your father, relay these words. Prepare 
for unforeseen consequences. So it turns out that Alex was saved by G-Man in Half-Life 1 because of her importance and also that G-Man has something with Eli Vance. After recovering, Gordon together with Alex reach the surface and proceed to the White Forest base. In this part of the game we get a car and fight a lot of enemies during our way to the White Forest base. Also we can see a lot of combined forces traveling towards the resistance base. At a certain moment we bump into a radio tower where we want to contact White Forest base to tell them about the attack that is prepared. Unfortunately, there is a nearby advisor that blocks the transmission and attacks Gordon and Alex with telepathic attacks. When it proceeds to kill us, the advisor gets damaged because of the broken life support system and just flees leaving us alive. Fighting with ambushes, we reach a place where a strider awakens, but in this moment the dog appears and successfully kills him. This means that we finally reach the White Forest base. Arriving at the base, we reunite with Eli and Kleiner. Alex gives them the data packet and here Dr. Magnuson appears. He is pretty egotistical, verbose and arrogant and for some reason holds a grudge against Gordon. We learn here that the White Forest team prepares a special rocket that should close the super portal. Out of nowhere, the base is being attacked by the Combine and we have to fight against them in order to protect the base and the rocket. After successfully repelling the attack, we return and talk to Eli. At this moment, he and Dr. Kleiner manage to decode the Mossman's message and it turns out that the project Mossman was talking about is nothing but Borealis developed by Aperture Science, a company that developed portals and whose story is presented in portal games. Borealis is a mysterious ship that is supposed to carry a powerful technology. According to Isaac Kleiner, Aperture Science was working on a promising project of unknown nature, but in their rush to beat Black Mesa for funding, they neglected ordinary safety measures and the vehicle somehow vanished with all crew and a part of the dry dock. It is assumed that the Borealis contains an immensely powerful and dangerous secret, most likely involving portals and teleportation on a larger scale than that of a handheld portal device, which explains how it is able to teleport away from an Aperture Science facility. It also gives the Combine ample reasons to investigate the vehicle, as they have yet to perfect localized teleportation technology, and with it, they could reconnect back to the Combine Overworld to flood the planet with their large and powerful armies. Kleiner thinks that we could use this ship in order to beat the Combine, while Eli insists that using it will cause another catastrophe as in Black Mesa. Initially Eli wanted to go together with Alex and Gordon to find Mossman, but he can't do it because the Combine follows him and his knowledge. All of a sudden, Alex tells Eli to be prepared for unforeseen consequences. Upon hearing this, Eli gets shocked and in private informs Gordon about everything he knows about G-Man. He tells us that G-Man told him the same words before the incident in Black Mesa. Here we also find out that the crystal for the experiment in Black Mesa was brought by G-Man, implying that everything until this point, Resonance Cascade, Invasion of Combine and so on happened because of G-Man. Eli regrets that he didn't abort the experiment after hearing those words and that G-Man tries to influence his daughter Alex. However, our dialogue is being interrupted by another attack. We once again had to fight the forces. And when we're finally done, the launch of the rocket is being prepared. Eli tells us that he thinks that G-Man's words about unforeseen consequences are related directly to Borealis. The rocket is launched and the super portal is being successfully closed, breaking any connection of the Combine with its overworld. Gordon, Eli and Alex head into the hangar in order to use a helicopter to fly to the Borealis. As Gordon and Alex prepare to depart to search for Dr. Judith Mossman, Advisors attack the helicopter hangar. They telekinetically pin Alex and Gordon to the wall and seize Eli. Eli warns them both that the Borealis must be destroyed and then tell Alex he loves her and not to look, as the advisors kill him, having potentially drained all information about the resistance and the Borealis from his brain. Dog arrives and fights off the advisors, saving Gordon and Alex. Her crying is all that can be heard as the screen fades to black and the credits roll. That's it! That's everything we knew for more than 10 years until Half-Life Alex was released. Remember when I told you to remember the words of a security guard in Half-Life 1? Well, 
The crash of the system that occurred back then was caused by G-Man, and most likely he did it because Gordon and other scientists received some messages telling to cancel the experiment. Well, that's it. We still have Half-Life Alex that also tells a lot about G-Man and other characters, but we'll leave that for later. I believe that Episode 2 was the best Half-Life game in terms of reliving the secrets. It tells us a lot of information about events that occurred until this point and whose fault it all happened. I hope you guys liked this video and I managed to tell you about some things you didn't know before. Don't forget to write a comment telling your impressions and maybe furies, I'll be happy to read them. Thank you for watching this video, see you in another one.